Duncan. And now here's your host, Deborah Duncan. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. Thank you very much. Okay, as we know, Halloween is this Saturday, and we'll set lots of or see lots of ghosts and goblins on the streets trick or treating. But for our guest today, seeing ghosts is a full time job, 24 seven. He is a fourth generation psychic medium, meaning he can communicate with those who have passed over. He wants me to sing a song for you. I just called to say I love you. I just called to say I really care. We split up from for a short time and he moved back to Texas and I wouldn't take his phone calls and I came home and that was on our, my answering machine. Well, in his books, Evidence of Eternity and Never Letting Go, he takes the fear out of death and helps us to heal when a loved one has passed away. At one point, he wanted to become a priest. Instead, he became a lawyer. Okay, well, please welcome Mark Anthony, otherwise known as the Psychic Lawyer. Good morning. Thank you, Thank you Deborah. Thanks. All right. Before we get to some of the readings here, I want to kind of get some other business out of the way. Sure. Uh, one, we mentioned that you grew up in a psychic family, so this wasn't weird to you. You thought everyone did this at one point. I, I did. I did. Mom and dad were, were both mediums, but my dad was a NASA engineer. My mom was a commercial artist, so it's not like they did this professionally, but this was part of who they were. Yeah. Okay. Every time we have you on the show or someone like you on the show, I'll get some people who say, oh my gosh, where can I see them? I get others who say, this is evil. All right. You wanted to be a priest. So, yes. uh, and then people will sometimes quote the Bible as the reason why they think this is something that's bad, but right. you can quote the Bible as to something that you think is good. Yes. Uh, throughout the Bible, there's many passages where psychic and mediumistic abilities are praised. I mean, Joseph interpreting the dreams of Pharaoh, Saul consulting the medium or witch of Endor, how you want to put it, um, the prophetess Deborah using her abilities to help defeat the Canaanites for the Israeli or you know the Jewish general Barak, and of course um, Jesus you know talking about foretelling the future and and raising people from the dead or energy healings. And when people say, well, mediums are not of God, but in the same passage it says, you know, don't eat pork, don't eat shellfish, and if your neighbor works on the Sabbath, he shall be put to death. So you know you have to take take some of those things in the context of the time that they were written right. and realize that the point of, of the teachings of Jesus were about peace and love and understanding and that life is truly everlasting. Yeah, you've done something that's pretty interesting. You're an Oxford educated attorney and yes. so you were able to kind of mix your psychic ability with law. In what way? It's all about evidence. As an attorney, I have to use evidence to prove my case. And as a psychic medium, I can't just say, oh, you know, your grandmother's here and she loves you. I have to produce pieces of evidence. So it can lead you to that evidence. That can lead you to that evidence. And, and I've been studied. In fact, uh, one of the top uh, scientists who studies mediums is, is going to be working with me shortly. And in England, I've been studied as well. And there's nothing unusual about these abilities. I mean, since for, for thousands of years, people have reported seeing the spirits of deceased loved ones. I mean, I bet if we ask the audience, how many people here have had a dream where a deceased loved one came and talked to them and it felt like a real experience? Yeah. Show of hands. I mean, look at it. Pretty much everybody here. And, and so th there's nothing unusual. But we dismiss it because, you know, we, I think as children we might believe, we believe in all kinds of things. That tooth fairy is coming and she's delivering some money, right? The whole bit. But, but then we kind of, our mind becomes closed to these things. All right, your book, Evidence of Eternity, was submitted for a Pulitzer, yes. uh, first for metaphysical category. Um, again, this is one of those things that the reason why, you know, seeing is believing for a lot of us. We want to touch it, we want to feel it, we want to smell it, we want well, to see sure. it, right? Uh, so otherwise we have a hard time believing it until you do some of the things you're about to do in a little bit in terms of the readings, but you have kind of this example of, of kind of um, explaining how just because you can't touch it, feel it, see it maybe, it doesn't mean it's not necessarily real. And it's how cell phones work, for example. How many of you know how cell phones work? A few of you know how it works, okay. but can you understand why it works? I still can't get how that works, all right? So I mean, we're surrounded by miraculous technology on a daily basis, but we, we dismiss it. I mean, think of, and the example I like to use is you want to call your Aunt Martha in England. So you whip out your cell phone and you call Aunt Martha. Now, what we know 
from the laws of physics is that energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. So suddenly, the energy in your brain sends a signal to your vocal cords to start vibrating. So electrical energy becomes mechanical energy, and it sends another signal to your lungs to uh, compress. So now mechanical energy is turned into muscular energy, and then air is being shoved out your lungs, and then that mechanical energy of your vocal cords vibrating becomes sound wave energy, which then hits the plate in the speaker of your cell phone, which vibrates, taking that sound wave energy, turning into mechanical energy, which then becomes electrical energy, which then hits the antenna, turning into radio wave energy, which then hits a tower not far from you, which then takes that radio wave energy, turns it into electrical energy, which sends it through miles of metallic wires up to a huge antenna dish, which then converts that electrical energy into radio wave energy, which then beams it up to a satellite. All right, then it gets converted from a, a radio wave energy to microwave energy as it bounces off a series of satellites, finding the right one, which is connected connected to the English uh, inter-telecommunication -tele system then gets beamed down in the form <laughs> of radio waves being converted from radio wave energy into electrical energy which goes through miles of wires to a tower converting the electrical energy back to radio wave energy which then hits Aunt Martha's cell phone turning that radio wave energy into electrical energy which then is converted into mechanical energy which causes the speaker in her earpiece to vibrate taking that mechanical energy, turning into sound wave energy, which hits her eardrum. Her eardrum begins to vibrate. Once again, we have mechanical energy, which causes the stapes bones in her inner ear to take that mechanical energy and then hit the eighth cranial nerve, converting that mechanical energy into electrical energy, which goes Hello. into her brain Hello. and becomes... Is that you calling, darling? Martha. <laughs> See? <laughs> and, and all of this... All of this happens at 186,282 miles per second. <laughs> Yet we don't think about that, do you? I believe you in ghosts more that? than I believe in cell phones right yeah. now. <laughs> and, and people go, oh, you can't talk to spirits. It's like, well, then how do you make a cell phone call? But we take that for granted. And then you get annoyed when it drops. Oh, I can't believe this dropped out. <laughs> you know, so where, where did it get lost? Somewhere over, you know, the Atlantic Ocean or the, you know, the Somewhere satellite over. over the rainbow, Somewhere right? over the rainbow. Yeah, exactly. And so people get all frustrated about that. And what we learn from those of us who study spirit communication as a science is that the energy that makes us alive pre-exists our body, comes into our body, and then moves on after our body. All right, what does every great religion teach us? I mean, we're talking uh, Buddhism, afterlife, Hinduism, yeah. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Native American religions. Um, all, of us, all of them teach that the soul, the spirit, who and what we are, pre-exists the body, comes into the body, and then moves on. What does the second law of thermodynamics and physics teach us? And we all had to learn this in school. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, destroyed. only transferred from one form to another. Never leaves the earth. Never leaves the earth. Yeah. All right, this time of year is when we, just about every culture has some type of celebration, you know, Dia de los Muertos, uh, Halloween, you know, we, we kind of, it, 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 we celebrate the dead, really, by, by yes. celebrating their life. Um, and then even throughout history, some of the most revered people in our history also did this. Uh, there's a Haunted White House series that you do, and there's yes. been rumors of sightings for many, many years. President Lincoln and Mary Todd, um, Abraham was, was rumored to be psychic himself, and you know he's honest, he wouldn't have lied about that. Um, <laughs> and he believed in precognition, seeing the future, and uh, he had dreams that... He, he did. Abraham Lincoln... Um, probably, probably one of our most unusual presidents. I mean, you know, we've all heard of the, the rags to riches story, taught himself how to read, mm -hmm. uh, became an incredible attorney. And then um, he also believed that he was a child of destiny. And he believed in what's known as precognitive ability, seeing the future in the forms of visions and dreams. And he was elected president. And then as he was getting ready to leave for Washington with his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, he looked in a mirror and he received a premonition that he would be elected twice, yet not survive his second term in office. Mm. Interesting. And then, of course, his son had, we believe, through writings and things, some types of abilities. Uh, Robert Todd Lincoln. Um, Robert Todd Lincoln was the sole surviving child of the Lincolns. Uh, yeah, because the two pictures we saw right there were two children right, who passed away. Right, the two away. pictures, uh, their son Edward died in 1850, and then Willie Todd Lincoln died in 1862 of typhoid at age 11. And Mary Todd Lincoln gets a really bad rap for being insane and, and, and being just really, really bizarre, but you know, have to look at it. 
She was a bereaved parent. Yeah. I mean, she lost two little boys, and her brother was fighting for the Confederacy. Most of her family supported the Confederacy. Her husband's Abraham Lincoln. They're in a civil war, and because she wasn't a Northern Virginia elegant lady or a sophisticated <laughs> Bacon New cookies, Yorker, right? yeah, yeah, she was looked at as a country bumpkin. So Washington society didn't exactly embrace her. I think we need to cut her some slack. That, and she was going through menopause when all this was going on. Oh, that explains on. everything uh, yeah, right I mean, there. Okay, look, okay. yeah. I mean, come now, on, lady. Now, one of the other cut? mysteries yeah. of life, right? Right. right. <laughs> all right. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a break in a second here, and you're going to come back and do some readings. But today on Facebook, while we can't uh, read you over Facebook, if you have a question for Mark about the afterlife, like what happens to a person's soul if they commit suicide, that's oftentimes a question that's asked. Do animals have souls? And how many people are trying to talk to you like right now? I wonder how many people are in the room right besides the ones you see. Log on. Let us know what you want to know. We'll share some of your comments later on in the show. So when we come back, Mark will help some audience members connect to the so-called other side.